Hi, welcome to our podcast, which we hope will be informative, entertaining, and family friendly. So it's not a radio cast. It's a podcast. Gotcha. All right. Aloha. I'm Christopher. I have a fancy piece of paper in my wall that says that I know more about history than most people. And I'm Shirley, and I'm a homeschool mom that relies on good curriculum, YouTube, and Christopher to teach our kids history. That's right, baby. Hey, honey, I have a history question for you. Do you? I do. So that game that you're always playing, Romance of the Three Kingdoms? Yes. That's based on history, right? Yes. Okay, so was it like a love triangle? It was a romance of the three kingdoms. Like, Your why were they hurt? Why were they all in a love triangle together? That's so different. Usually we hear about the wars between different neighboring countries. So I think it's quite wholesome that they that they had some love for each other instead. Give me strength, gods. Okay. So I'm right? Uh, no. There was, yes, of course, there was some romancing going on between various men and women of the time. But no, three kingdoms were not romancing upon one, one another. The romance of the three kingdoms refers to a period in Chinese history from about uh, the uh, latter half of the first century to the beginning of half of the second century AD, in which uh, the Han Empire, or sorry, the Han Dynasty, rather, which was the ruling family in China at the time. Wait, what? Why does what's the difference between an empire and a dynasty, and why an, does it matter? An empire is an organization of territory, cities, or whatnot, often under the control of one man. A dynasty is a family that okay. controls an empire kingdom or something along those lines. Got it. Uh, today, we sometimes even use dynasties to talk about the business empires as right. opposed to political empires. So anyway, the Han dynasty. So the Han family was uh, losing their power, losing their influence. Uh, rebellion begins in the, again, I said the latter part of the first century AD in China, or well, okay, technically the second century AD because it was the 100 years. The second century AD in China, uh, at the end of that rebellion, rather than the empire pretty much going in back into uniformity, many different warlords who assisted the emperor during that time all ended up branching out, having their own cities, their own kingdoms. Some of them would go on to support the emperor. Others would go after their own interests. And in the end of all the fighting that would take place amongst those various warlords, three of the kingdoms emerged as the dominant ones at the end of that faction or at the end of that period. And when we talk about the romance of the three kingdoms, I'd, ha I'd have to admit, I don't know if that's the translation or if the author of the book that most of our knowledge about this is based on purposely used that word or if that's just a mistranslation and we say it's the romance. But it's basically the, the uh, sometimes in our old chivalric tales, we talk about things being romantic. There was a romance to the way that people lived their lives, did things back in that day. We are talking about that similar kind of relationship between these three kingdoms. Wait, so were the... Okay, so these three dudes. The three kingdoms? Do you want to know about the kingdoms, or are you asking me about the guys that ran those kingdoms? It's one and the same, right? No. Okay. So the, so the three dudes... The kingdoms were Wu, Shu, and Wei. The three dudes were Cao Cao, Liu Bei, and oh, Sun Tran. Okay, so the three dudes who found never been sure if he's pronounced Sun Tran or Sun Quan. There's lots of different ways that I've seen it pronounced, eh, seen it pronounced, heard it pronounced. There Maybe you should ask a Chinese person. I've asked Chinese people; even they can't come to a uniformity on the matter. For real? Yeah. Really? I've told you about this. I talked to a lot of Chinese people while I was in Hawaii. I've talked to a couple of China people since I've been out of Hawaii. And yeah, I've gotten different answers from most of them. Is it just because it's the so most old? The most common consensus that I ever get is whenever I say some of their names, all of them agree that, yes, that's a way to pronounce it. Is but it, they disagree on that's the way to pronounce it. Is it just because of like, like we don't speak Chinese, so are we incapable of understanding or forming the correct sounds? As I recall, in, because we speak English, as I recall, what's well, that's part of it. But as I recall, once upon a time when efforts were made to uh, use our uh, alphabet system uh, to understand or to be able to write down Chinese, 
the Chinese powers that be, or the Chinese people that were involved in the matter, they said that, no, we were using our letters wrong, or they didn't like the way that we were using our letters. Seems so, on brand. So they adopted the modern system of letters that uh, we use today for, for writing uh, Chinese names and words. And yeah, the pronunciations don't quite sound like what most of us in our not living in China, not being exposed to Chinese culture and language, uh, we wouldn't agree that that's how you would pronounce some of these things. Okay. Like uh, one of the, I think one of the most common ones is the, uh, is the South family. So my understanding is that the proper pronunciation of that is you say sow, kind of like a, like a female pig mother, a sow, but there's a, just the slightest hint of a T right before you say that. So it's not sow, it's sow. I'm not even sure if I like, I can hear myself doing it, but I'm not even sure if anybody else could actually hear no, me. I can the hear difference. the difference. All right. But then I've also heard some people say, no, it's just sow, similar to, again, what we would call a fem uh, female pig mom. Uh, I've also heard it called a chow, like C-H, chow, mm. or like we're eating chow. Um, and I've also heard um, plenty of other people, and I think these are the ones that like to tease it the most, uh, call it cow, as in the animal cow. That's a big difference. Especially when one of his, uh, son, when one of uh, Cao Cao's sons' first name is often pronounced Pi, so his name is Cow Pie. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. That's funny, though. And every time that we say that, I wonder to myself that we're causing dishonor. The ghosts of that man and his family. Oh man! I mean, if the Chinese got heaven and hell right, the ghosts of that family—they're <laughs> gonna—they're gonna come after us all. Definitely. Okay. So wait. So back to. Okay, we got distracted. Okay. So the three dudes who founded the three kingdoms. Okay. Yeah. They knew each other. They did. Because they all were under the emperor in the Han Dynasty. No. Okay, I totally missed that then. So you said the Han, Han not dynasty. The Empire. Han dynasty of the Chinese empire or the Han empire. The Han empire. Okay. These, these three yeah. dudes. So they all, in the beginning, they all worked for the emperor or rather they were all began as loyal to the emperor. Got it. But before it was all over, the three of them disagreed. Okay. But is the empire still main ruler of the land? That's what I don't get. All right, so no. Did it break up? Did the empire break up? The empire did break up. So okay. Uh, so uh, going back to what I said, I mentioned that there was a rebellion. This was often called the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Some people right. call it the Yellow Scarf Rebellion, uh, the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Uh, in either case, there's a rebellion. Got Yellow it. is the color that is adopted by these rebels. And it's in that war that a lot of the people who will become famous in the Three, and Three Kingdoms uh, book uh, get uh, their say, or rather rise to prominence and fame. So um, of the three people that are involved, um, the first one, Cao Cao, he is working for, or rather he is loyal to the emperor. Okay. Uh, he's working for a man named Wan Shao and helps him in fighting against the Yellow Turbans. Uh, the other gentleman, or sorry, one of the other gentlemen, Liu Bei, uh, he and uh, two uh, people he meet who become good friends of his, sworn brothers, in fact, uh, they meet at the start of the rebellion and they agree to fight together for the emperor. And then the third one, I don't think he was actually even born at the time of the empire. Sun, uh, a popular uh, translation that I'm familiar with his name is Sun Tran. Mm hmm. Um, I, I've usually called him Sun Quan, so I might bounce back and forth as I'm talking about him. Yeah. So he was actually the uh, second son, or at least the younger son, of a man named Sun Jian. Sun Jian, I do not believe, fought for the emperor during the rebellion. I think he kind of stayed out of it. He might have gotten involved, but uh, he was uh, basically a pirate uh, at the time. Um, and... Either he was uh, so. If he did fight for the emperor, he was rewarded for his service by giving some tan, uh, some titles and some land. If he did not fight for the emperor, then he probably just took the title and the land for himself because he lived primarily in the southern regions, which were not the most um, loyal to the empire. It's kind of an old class of thing about empires: the farther away that you are from the capital, the easier it is for the land to be lawless or to come under various different forms of control by other people. And you did say he was a pirate, so. 
Yeah. Just take what you want. So after, um, but um, uh, round, uh, round about, after the Yellow Turban Rebellion was over, Sun John was killed in an ambush and his eldest son, Sun Si, took over. Sun Si was a brilliant military commander, but he didn't last very long either. If I remember correctly, he was killed in battle. And so that's when Sun Tran took over. As far as to if Liu Bei and Cao Cao... I know Liu Bei and Cao Cao had... Well, I take that back. It is very likely that Liu Bei and Cao Cao had met Sun Zhan, the father, before uh, all of this came into being. Okay. Uh, because they did work together after the Yellow Turban Rebellion rather briefly. Um, but as far as if they knew... If either of them knew Sun Tran before the th before what we would identify as the three kingdom period came into being then no i do not know that for sure they were certainly okay. aware of him but i don't know if they had ever actually met him okay so this wasn't like three buddies who like divided up the kingdom and went their separate ways no these were very much three rivals so uh as history often records or at least most of the history that i've studied on the matter Cao Cao is the bad guy the villain of them all he is brilliant, he is ambitious, he is also ruthless, and he uh, does a very good job of, of navigating all the political circumstances into getting himself into power, uh, help and getting other people to help him against his political rivals. And then he gets, uh, luck I don't think is the right word, but there's definitely an element in there, luck. Basically from his, a lot of his brilliance and the good people that he has working for him, he's able to get the upper hand on another river of situations that basically get him not only in charge of the emperor, but knocking out his only real rival for control in the northern part of China, which is uh, Wan Shao, the guy that he was working for at the time of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. So um, when Cao Cao is going on this power bad streak and consolidating his uh, control of the Northern Territories and the Emperor, this is when Liu Bei starts to get in the way. Liu Bei is a humble guy, as we would believe from the time, but he is very, very dedicated to the Emperor and the divinity of the Emperor and the, the culture of, uh, of a Chinese loyalty to the Emperor at that time. So when he sees what Cao Cao is doing, he can't abide it, and he is one of the only people that tries regularly to stop Cao Cao. Now, even though Liu Bei's got some good people working for him as well, Cao Cao has more good people. Cao Cao has a wider diversity of uh, more intelligent people. His people aren't the best fight, and Liu Bei's got better fighters working for him than Cao Cao does, but Cao Cao still has perfectly capable fighters, and again, more importantly, Cao Cao has some really, really smart guys, not to mention he's insanely smart himself. That's helpful. So they're able to consolidate their power and crush Liu Bei over and over again. They basically send Liu Bei running all the way into the Southlands, it's while he's in the south that Liu Bei does make con contact with Sun Zhan, or sorry, Sun Tran, and they agree to uh, the, they agree to the two of them working together to stop Cao Cao from taking over the whole of the country. The idea being that all right, if there are three of us, then there will be a balance of power. No one group will be able to get too much power because the other two will stop them from doing so. So what you're saying is the American Constitution was inspired by Romans of the Three Kingdoms. What? That's what I heard. What? Three groups. When did I say that? Three groups, balance of power. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. The concept of three being a balance of power, that is a universal concept. That is not something the Chinese own. That is not something the Americans own. Three being a balance is a universal principle. Look at a stool. Two-legged stool, there's no balance. Three legs is the minimum you need for balance. Okay, but the three-legged stool is a stupid example. And How I've is always it a stupid example? It. Sorry. Have you ever seen a three-legged stool? Yes. Like an actual three-legged stool? I can't swear In to it. In real life? I can't swear to it. No, people make stools with four legs. Yeah. Four legs, not three. Yeah. So, but why is three? Okay, it doesn't matter why. Did you three miss the part where? No, no, no! Don't you say that? No, 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 no! It matters. Okay, it, it matters. matters. Three. I said. I. I'm pretty sure I said this. We can rewind this and then find it. Here. <laughs> if anybody's listening to this, they can put it in the comments. I specifically said three legs is the minimum okay. you need for balance. Okay. That doesn't mean that three legs is recommended. No, I'm sure. Yeah, four legs is better than three legs. Fifty-seven thousand legs is better than three legs. I'm pretty sure. But 
that's hardly so economical. what you're saying is you're advocating for a fourth branch of american government what? <laughs> i did not say that you said that I was the not. minimum <laughs> i said three was the minimum i never said that i want there to be a fourth branch of government okay nothing it, i'm not saying that a fourth branch of government would be bad i i i would actually be very interested to sit down with some other people <laughs> and talk about what a fourth branch might be because i've never thought about it before okay never mind so it doesn't always never have to be mind. about america That's a coward's answer never mind it doesn't always have to be about you know america. what, the part, you know what just... they say about cowardice right and cowardice is the better part of discretion <laughs> or no sorry yeah cowardice <laughs> discretion is the better part of valor cowardice is the better part of discretion right right yes. okay sorry so back back to what you were saying so balance back to what power. i was saying or back to what you were saying before i so rudely interrupted you mm -hmm. and took you off track mm -hmm. just wanted you to know that i was actually listening to what you said mm -hmm. okay so three balance of power go on about what? Are we talking about the U.S. now? Are we still no, talking about China no. now? I would love to hear everything about these three kingdoms and why they romanced each other. Yeah, right. Uh, okay. Well, where where would we leave off? Oh, okay. So no, I told you about how we got to the balance of power. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much what happened after that point. All three of them kind of struggled for power. They all three of them wanted to expand their kingdoms. All three of them wanted to. Uh, that's not the right way to say it. Miss, uh, so in, in the beginning of the Three Kingdom period, or at least when it got down to the three of them, it was the idea that uh, Sun, Sun Tran and Liu Bei worked together to stop Cao Cao, but they would eventually have a falling out as well. So all three of the kingdoms were more or less hostile towards each other. Uh, all three of them had campaigns that would go to war against each other from time to time. Uh, if I remember correctly, by the end of it, Cao Cao's kingdom, which was Wei, ended up being the dominant of the three but all three of these guys, Sun Tran, uh, Liu Bei, and Cao Cao, were dead before the heights of their kingdoms ever came into being. That's sad. It is unfortunate. If I remember correctly, none of their sons even took over after them. The, all three of their kingdoms ended up in, uh, belonging to different people before they eventually fell apart and a new uh, dynasty took over China. That sucks. Okay, so what... What makes this, what makes this period so interesting that it has become, I mean, obviously that book and then how many, like 20 video games? Yes. Lots of video games. Like why? And why did I never hear about this part of history until you told me about the game? Uh, how many stories would you say that you've heard about King Arthur? A million. Uh, how many stories would you say that you've heard about George Washington? A million. Uh, how many stories would you say that you've heard about uh, Julius Caesar or any of the Roman empires? For yeah, that I mean, a lot. We... Right? Well, because that's your culture. Right. We, we grow up often hearing about the stories of our culture, not necessarily the stories about other cultures. Not saying that that's necessarily because of a bad thing, but I'm assuming right. that predominantly it's because we tend to focus on the stories that are our own cultures and especially if we don't know these other stories exist, then we don't pass them on. For me, I mean, yeah, I wasn't familiar with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms period at all until somebody had exposed me to the game. And that's when I was like so interested about the details of it that when I found out it was a real thing that, yeah, I wanted to learn more about it. But it's it's very much to my mind the same thing as like the King Arthur legends or the legends and the stories that we tell ourselves about Roman empires or about former presidents or other heroes that we've had in American history. This is the story. And I definitely recommend reading the book to anybody who's listening to this. I mean, cause it's, it's awesome. They're just awesome stories. There's the, the amount of depth and the amount of depth that's in these stories is just uncanny. And these guys do a lot of really, really heroic things. There are brilliant strategic moves, brilliant stories about bravery, about loyalty, about efforts to do what is right, about power, about ambition, about treachery, greed, deceit. Just all kinds of stories that are totally, totally pertinent to our day and age and that can inspire us, inspire our imaginations, inspire us as a people also because these are better than a lot of the uh, fantasy stories that are out there because for the most part, a lot of this stuff is true. We know that surely the author of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms book embellished some details, 
but we don't know for sure what they were. We know that a lot of these people that he talked about did did and in, were indeed real people. We know that a lot of the events, if not in the way he described them, the events at least we know happened. And there are just some beautiful, awesome stories in there that I think would do a, a marvelous job at expanding our imaginations. Not to mention they're a testament once again as to how awesome we as a species are. Yeah, it's a shame that we've used some of our awesomeness to find better ways of killing each other. Nevertheless, that's always involved awesome people coming up with awesome ideas and awesome ways to do awesome things. Awesome. I think you use that word too much. <laughs> Just quoting you. So, okay, so hmm, what am I trying to ask? Um, Probably something embarrassing. So I haven't heard of the Three Kingdoms just because I'm a stupid American and it wasn't included in my history book. But this is common knowledge in other parts of the world. I don't know. This about is all, like their yeah. cool history stories. I don't know about all parts of the world, but when I uh, granted, I've never been to China myself. The fingers crossed as I say that because I hope to be able to go there someday. Every Chinese person that I have talked to about it while I was in Hawaii is very familiar with it. And I was surprised because, yes, I, I thought the first time that maybe this is something obscure. So every now and then when I've encountered people from other countries and I try to talk to them about the history of their countries, I've been kind of sad for the most part because all of them have basically told me that, yeah, they don't know anything about their history. It's kind of like when you see those videos oh, of no. Americans. Uh, every now and then you're like, you'll see those on YouTube or something like that where somebody will go around like on the streets of uh, New York, L.A. Right. somewhere, and they'll ask like basic U.S. history questions. And people of it's every age, every race, gender, creed, whatever, yeah, they, they, they don't know some of these answers. And as a history teacher, it makes me want to cry inside. Right. And yeah, a, a lot of the conversations I've had with people from foreign countries, I find out, okay, so that's not an American thing. That's just a historically this historical ignorance thing a lot of people don't know a lot about the histories of their countries their towns their cities their people whatever the case might be right so i was very surprised when i was in hawaii and the number of people that i talked to that were just absolutely familiar with it helped me amongst other things learn the translations of the names okay. and filled me in on just how revered some of these characters still are today uh, I remember reading uh, just recently, uh, one of the two guys who was the sworn brothers of Liu Bei, I told you that he he and two of his friends, they right. kind of swore an oath to each other uh, when the Yellow Turban Rebellion the was beginning. The Peach Trio. The Peach Trio. I know something. That? I know something. You told me about the Peach I'm Trio. I'm very happy you remember Woo! the Peach Trio. Yeah. What do I win? So, uh, my respect. Okay, good enough. Go on. I think that's worth something. I Go hope. on. <laughs> All right. So yes, uh, Liu Bei and his two brothers, uh, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, they swear their, uh, to each other uh, that they will die on the very same day of the very same year and the very same month and the same battlefield. Uh, something of that nature. I don't remember the exact words off the top of my head. Um, and yeah, and Guan Yu is heavily revered, or at least 20 years ago he was in China. And, um, or he must still be because I remember, like I think it was maybe five years ago or so, I read that they just completed like a new uh, statue or temple of some sort to uh, Quan Yu there. And I got to see a picture of it and it looks awesome. So um, Quan Yu was not the greater fighter of the two brothers, Zhang, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu. Zhang Fei was the better fighter, I believe. But Guan Yu was definitely the smarter of the two guys. Mm. So he was all around an awesome guy. I dare say that if Guan Yu had been in charge of the whole, let's say that Guan Yu had been in charge instead of Cao Cao, if Guan Yu had risen to power instead of Cao Cao, I think that China would have had a much more prosperous history, or at least I would say its odds of having a much more prosperous history would have been better. Okay. Because yeah, he's a cool dude. So it's not a surprise then that these tales inspired these video games. And it's just lucky that they've become popular enough in america for them to keep releasing them in america i think so it's been unfortunate because not all of the versions have been released in america or at least not all in english but yeah i uh, i love the franchise and i continue playing it i have i haven't enjoyed uh, any of the games that they've released since uh 11 unfortunately on the ps2 I still play it. yes i think you're the only person in the country who still plays on their ps2 okay well you know that's not true i get together with my buddies and we romance a lot that's true <laughs> okay 
Okay. Very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. So it isn't a love triangle. It is not a love triangle unless you want to say these men all loved China in their own way. And try, no, because that's not true. But they all loved at best, war. At best, one of them loved China. The other two, they loved their empires. And they loved war. Because that's what they did. I wouldn't say they loved war. But so that's one of those things. I don't think that any of them... Lo- I'm inclined to say that none of them loved war. I'm willing to bet that some, if not all of them, though, loved the things that go into war. They loved the the planning the logistics the strategy the the making of a plan and then seeing it come into fruition i think they loved that part i don't think any of them were in love with the yeah i like going out there and killing me some folk part okay well that's good it's like when i play video games i'm happy that these aren't real people that i'm killing or or that are dying because of my (laughs) orders but i like that's nice to hear i like seeing my plans come together i like seeing that oh yeah i just pulled off an ambush oh yeah i just surrounded those guys and win a major victory okay that okay that makes sense it's it's like if you're it's it's almost like everybody has something like this for some reason uh, when a painter is making a picture, when a when a um, artist, uh, yeah, when an artist is making something, when uh, anybody in whatever their profession or their hobby might be is trying to complete a project or do whatever it is that you do with that, it's the it's the fun of being able to accomplish that goal, whatever that goal is. And yeah, I think for I think for some of these guys, the goal was to become the the goal was to become powerful, to be a power for whatever they thought was right and good and true. In some cases, I think their moral, their moral values matched up with what, or at least is us uh, is the common moral compass that we tend to use still in the American culture. And in other cases, the no, their uh, their moral alignments were less than what we would call uh, the the most admirable. Mm -hmm. but each of them was still doing what they thought was best, be it for themselves or for others. Right. And that's common all throughout history. Yeah. Okay. It's one of the things that gross and that makes me sad the most about people when they, when they try to comment on history without actually studying or knowing history too often, people try to look at history through the, the narrow focus of their eyes, their experience, instead of recognizing that, no, these were, these were different times, different circumstances, not unique because a lot of these stories do re- history repeats itself an awful lot. But being in these different times in these different places, when you have different cultures, especially having an influence on people's minds, then yeah, things are going to be done a little bit differently. Okay. And I think, I think, uh, being able to identify with it, people talk today about how, oh, there's not enough empathy in the world. I don't think there's ever been enough empathy for people in the past. Nobody ever has empathy for, or not enough people, rather, I think, have empathy for the people in the past. We judge them with the benefit of our 2020 hindsight, and that's it. That is a very good point, and it sounds like a topic all on its own. So I'm going to stop you there. All right. Thank you for everyone listening today. If you'd liked what you heard, then please subscribe, tell your friends, and leave us a five-star review. If you would like to hear a future episode with more information about today's topic, email us or send us a message on Instagram. Also, please contact us if you have a silly question idea or if there's something from history that you would love to learn about. Uh, Just be sure to specify in your message if it's silly or serious because we don't want to treat a genuine quest for knowledge as a joke. And do also remember, these are not prepared ahead of time. Shirley does not tell me what she's going to ask me about. I do not. So all of this is literally just off the top of my head. Yes. Are you worried people are going to judge you? Oh, I'm sure people are going to judge me because, like, I know I said uh, somewhere, I'm sure I said uh, somewhere around about here, something around about there. Uh, It was about this time. I don't remember exactly (laughs) what it was because I don't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head, like what the year was or uh, something of that nature. So I'm sure there are plenty of people that if they're, if they are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't say that word. Um, If they are (laughs) uh, strict enough will comment and say, oh, you got this year wrong, or oh, you got that name wrong. Yeah, yeah. True, true. So that's why if people would like to know the exact dates of those things, if there's something that they're interested in learning more about, you are more than well, more than willing to research it and give us more details, right? Say yes.
my fancy piece of paper on the wall says that I'm still smarter than you. Yes, but you're willing to share your knowledge. Yes, share my knowledge, of course. <laughs> so go ahead and send us a message if you'd like to learn more about anything. And we will see you next time. So we should be able to edit out things that we don't like after it's done. Like if I were to fart? Yes. yes. That would be good to edit out. That would be good to edit out. Valve movements don't make for great radio. No. Is this radio? It's modern radio. Modern radio? What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. That's a term that I just coined just now. Does it go out? Really? Does it go out I don't over know. the air? Does it go out over the airwaves? How do you define it? Are airwaves still a thing? It's internet. It's like satellite waves, I want to say. Sat do satellites still... have waves? I don't know. Do, 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 I'm, I'm still stuck on this door. Radio waves, are they still out there? I have no idea. Yes, radio waves are still a thing. But like everyone does everything on the internet now. Huh. It's interesting. Is this our first blooper reel? Is that what this is? Oh, is that what's going on? That's right, we started this by saying we were recording, were we? Did we press record? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey! <laughs> that took us a minute. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so what were we talking about now? Alright, so I'm going to start right now. Oh. Okay, ready? Right now. Right now. Right now. Gotcha. Good. Okay. Let me pull it. Let me, let me get into character here. Oh my gosh. What? I'm, I'm waiting. Sorry. Sorry. Go. Yes. <laughs>